As for sounding like a native and speaking like a native, the important thing is for you to be understood. One of the main things that I find to be a problem for my students over the past five and more years has been being able to give examples for their reasoning, being able to back up why they feel a certain way about a certain thing, and metaphors. So those are three things that are very useful in public speaking, so we will address all three of those throughout the lesson. Uh, the, le the course is 15, it should be 15 episodes, there may be more, I have a lot of material. All right, so who am I? I've mentioned, Kiki. Uh, who should be watching this? I've mentioned pre-intermediate, intermediate, and advanced. And what are my three rules? I have three rules. They're so strict. I'm horribly a strict teacher. All right, my three rules are you have to try. You have to try. Yeah, I know it would be great if I could just plug in English and it would be there. It doesn't work like that. So you have to try. Two, you have to make mistakes. If you don't make mistakes, you're not trying. If you're not trying, don't take the course. Just save your time and watch a TV show in your own language. I'm just kidding. Watch it and do whatever you want. Okay. And number three, you have to keep going. After you do this, this course, you have to find something else and try something else. All right. That being said, one way to do all, make all three of those rules come true is the speaking part in the homework. You should take your phone, you should download an app, you can try HelloTalk, HelloTalk, or you can try um, Language Exchange, any of those kinds of applications that have a native speaker and you. So hello talk. I'm just going to write this down for you. Hello talk. Hello talk is an app that I've used to communicate with native speakers. I've been practicing my Korean and they were practicing their English. It has a very easy dictionary and a box for how to give uh, corrections for mistakes. What you should be doing is you should be filling out the question part of the speaking and then using those questions in the applications with the native. Look online, lots of communication applications between natives and non-natives. Okay, so that's one way to do all three things. Try make mistakes, keep going. I'm, I, yeah, I'm looking at you. You've got to do it. All right. All right. And that is the conclusion of my introduction. Uh, well, let's see. I can tell you some of the things I will be talking about, but I don't really want to ruin the surprise. All right. So let's just take a look at, um, let's see, I could, I could show you the homework, or I could tell you why my name is Kiki. Okay, let's try, let's go with nickname. Okay. Uh, Ifat is a beautiful name, it means beauty, <coughs> and uh, I was named after my grandmother. Uh, I'm half Israeli, half American. That means that I'm Jewish, and in case you don't know what that means, it doesn't mean anything. Um, it, we can talk about religion later, but for now, let's just say I'm half Israeli from Israel and half American. I don't have an accent. My English and my Hebrew are both native, and I got a Hebrew name, which is not common in America at all. Uh, when people see the name Ifat written down, I can write it out for you. It's, it's Ifat. 
uh, they don't really know what those letters mean. They look at it, they're like, oh, hmm, that, and I'm just not sure what it is, and they don't want to be rude, so sometimes they don't even try, and that's fine. I don't care, and that's not a problem, but as a teacher, I don't want my students to feel uncomfortable. That's not what I want. It's not about me. It's about the student. It's about what the student can get from the class. It's about fun. It's about moving further into the world of English without the student even knowing how much work they're doing. So I gave myself a nickname, Kiki. I chose this nickname. It's fun. It's cute. In Korean, it sounds like laughter. Just that's partly my personality, partly to put the students at ease. If you are in the business world, if you're watching this because you need public speaking help and you have a foreign sounding name, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I've told all my business students, no problem. My husband's name is Jungkook. It's not that difficult to say. It's a little strange. Those sounds don't go well together in the mind of an English speaker. But as long as you follow through by saying your name again and again, every time you meet the person, if you really want them to remember your name, every time you meet them, hey, I don't know if you remember my name, but it's, it's Ifat. 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 That's three times I've said it. If I can get this other person to say it, then maybe it'll stick a little bit better. But here's my warning to my students, especially business, anything in sales. They're not going to call the person whose name they don't remember, cannot pronounce, or sounds too much like another name. I'm dealing, I deal mostly with Korean students and Mr. Kim is a very common name. If they can't remember which Kim, they may pull out one card, business card, and go, I'll just choose this Kim. Or they may not choose any at all. So, so, up to you. You get to decide. Choose to repeat your name. For example, my husband has to say Jungkook. Jungkook. Jong again and again and again and people can get it it's I got it it's not impossible it's certainly not that strange but 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 even my family will say can't we call him something shorter like John you can call him John, but he won't respond to John because that's not his name. That's fine. That's their problem. They don't have to call him. If you're in business, on the other hand, and your name is John Kim versus Jungwook Kim, then they're going to call John. I'm just telling you now. It's nothing personal. It's, it's not something you can't teach another person. It just depends on your relationship with that other person. For example, for a husband, you should learn their name, right? That's, that's just something you would do when you're dating, not, not when you're married. I mean, when you're dating, that's something you do. But as a business partner or somebody you call once every month or meet at a convention, they might not learn your name. These are choices choices we make in business, choices we make in life. You can choose a name, you can go with your name, just say it again and again. That's a good way to get people to remember you. Do you remember my name? It's so easy. It's Kiki. This seminar is not just for Korean speakers. I'm just in Korea, South Korea, in case you were wondering, South Korea, and so I just have a lot of experience with South Korean speakers. Those are going to be my examples, but you can change those examples to any country. All right, so that's the end of my introduction. The next lesson will be coming soon.